Good morning. Welcome to another day in the apocalypse. There's been a lot of interesting developments here in China. I'm sure uh, for you, anybody watching this is likely in lockdown at this point. Uh, since you have nothing else to do, you might as well sit and watch through this little video. But anyway, yes, like I said, lots of interesting developments happening here in China. And don't worry. I'm not going to be uh, in the apartment all day. I'm not. Uh, I'm no longer quarantined. But I do want to limit my going out because <laughs> people here are really letting their guard down. I know I mentioned it in other uh, other videos, but uh, now there's been new developments that makes me uh, think that yes, I am indeed correct that the second wave is upon us. Apparently, the Chinese government has ordered uh, from other countries, mind you. 200,000 body bags, 200,000 plus body bags. I think they're preparing for something. And as I said, the message that has been put out on the Chinese news, excuse me, the message that's been put out on the Chinese news has been the virus is eradicated in China and now it's a foreign problem. But uh, <laughs> that message has caused people to really walk around thinking that that's true. No masks. No social distancing, just doing whatever, which means, yeah, the virus is probably spreading. I also just saw a news report about a lady that uh, took her husband to the hospital in Wuhan. So she took her husband to the hospital in Wuhan because he has a brain tumor, and they have good doctors, I guess, to, I guess, do surgery on that sort of thing. This is probably old news for you guys. Even news in China, especially news in China, is delayed getting out. So, went to the hospital in Wuhan, and wouldn't you know it, suddenly her husband is uh, positive for the virus after one night in Wuhan. <laughs> um, and they're opening Wuhan back up, supposedly. They've been saying that for weeks, by the way. They keep saying they're going to open up Wuhan, it's going to be opened up, no new cases, and then they don't open it up. Um, but apparently some of it is opened up, but don't even think of going there. If you happen to be in China, don't think, oh, I'm going to make the trip to Wuhan to see the, uh, the epicenter of this whole disaster. Don't do that. That's probably a really bad idea. But to be honest, I think the virus is everywhere. We talked about the, uh, the test kits that were contaminated in another video uh, with trace amounts of the virus. That, that means that there are probably workers handling the stuff that had the virus. And asymptomatic or not, I'm guessing that uh, for most people, they don't really have symptoms. They don't end up gasping for air, but a large enough portion of people that get the virus do end up with those symptoms, so that's why it's so important. So this isn't a different virus, it's the same virus. And it's being spread everywhere. So, like I said, they prepar they're preparing though. They've got 200,000 body bags that they ordered. Ah, uh, it's a nightmare, I tell you. Just a nightmare. So, I figured before I went outside, I would watch the news, catch up on uh, what's happening. But instead, I'm treated to some kind of a propaganda piece about the World Health Organization. Now, a couple of things are in this report that I just heard. One, that the United States is the largest contributor to the World Health Organization. And two, that supposedly the government in Wuhan and the World Health Organization was on this early on, you know, helping to prevent this pandemic, which they didn't prevent anything, you know. But two things that they're trying to suggest here, because everyone is saying that the World Health Organization is corrupt and they're doing whatever China says because of money, so they're going to show that the United States is the largest contributor. Now... We know, but when you hear these numbers, yes, they are the largest contributor, the United States. But that's in money that, you know, everybody knows about, where the accountants can show where the money came from. China, on the other hand, is probably the... Now, nah, I've got to be careful what I say. We're talking about corruption. So let's say that some Chinese official comes along and puts a bunch of money in my pocket. Obviously, that doesn't get counted toward contribution, contributions to the World Health Organization. The uh, leader of the World Health Organization, on the other hand, I guess <laughs> maybe China 
is the leader or the, the main contributor to, to his pocket money. That, that's my guess. And I'm not demonizing China for this, you know. They understand this type of organization and how corrupt it is. And when you're a country that's working on statecraft and that sort of thing, of course you're going to take advantage of that. I mean, I'm sure the United States does the same exact thing in other places. In fact, I know they do. Don't ask me how I know that. But <laughs> they do that stuff. They'll use every tool available to get what they want. Every country. Everywhere. It's just that some have bigger pockets than others. So you better believe they were doing that. But this has gone and shown that. You know, now the World Health Organization, no one's ever going to take them serious again. And people are going to be demanding that they be defunded. I think that's already ha starting to happen. And rightfully so. Their job is not to make themselves rich. Their job is to protect everybody around the world. And they failed miserably. And they should be gotten rid of. I, they should be accountable. So there needs to be some, some kind of way to have them be accountable to the people that they're supposed to protect, which is everyone in the whole world. Not just China, not just America, not the rich countries, not just the poor countries, but everyone equally. Just ridiculous. Yeah, I'm still watching TV. I'm just getting ready to go out uh, for the walk I was mentioning. Like I said, I'm not uh, going to just stay in the apartment all day. But before that, my wife is cooking some fried rice and bean sprouts, apparently, which I, I absolutely hate eating those bean sprouts. Other people might like them. Some people might even say they're healthy or something. I don't know if they're healthy or not. I keep telling my wife they cause kidney stones <laughs> in hopes that she'll stop cooking it. She knows I hate them. She loves to eat that kind of stuff. I guess that's Chinese food. But yeah, bean sprouts. I hate bean sprouts. Oh, look at that food. Everything looks delicious, except for the bean sprouts, but you know how I feel about that. Well, I'm finally heading out. I think uh, I'm probably going to start from the roof, actually. Well, I'm starting from the elevator, but you know what I mean. I'm going to go up to the roof, have a look around. Maybe we'll go out into one of the old neighborhoods. Maybe today I'll brave it. Uh, <laughs> push the wrong floor button. 30th floor. But we're not all the way up. We're gonna go up the stairs first. Hopefully there's no old ladies up here hanging up their clothes. Yeah. Ah, here we are, up on the roof. Same view as from the balcony. It's only three floors up. <laughs> but, uh, well, I can get you guys another view. Hang on a second here. There's the main part of the city behind me. You can see it gets pretty dense back there. Uh, maybe sometime, boy, it looks pretty dead. I don't see a lot of traffic on the road. Well, that's kind of the way it is these days. Uh, either way, time to head back down to the street and to go see something different than just the apartment building. Now I know it looks like I'm in a park. Somebody mentioned uh, some skylights. They do have parks with uh, shopping malls underneath and there's actually one here in this city. One that I know of, there's probably more than one. <clears throat> but uh, this is actually just the uh, place where I live. Um, it's set up like a park out here. I mean, they've got playgrounds and stuff for kids to play in. There's some fields and you can see it's uh, well landscaped. But um, actually, well, it's, it's, I guess you could call it a park. A private park for the people that live here. Well, I made it out to the street. No longer in the, uh, the enclosed grounds of the apartment, uh, or whatever you want to call it. I, they're not, I guess they're technically not apartments. Condos? What would you call it? Here they just call it a house. <laughs> That's a Chinese house. Yeah. It won't take me too long to get up here. Just got to wait for the uh, light to change. Here we go. Oh my goodness. I really am afraid there's going to be a mess. I should... Hopefully not. Hopefully... <laughs> maybe everybody got infected by it at some point with a mild version and maybe there isn't much to worry about from a second wave. I'm going to hope for that. Because... 
I'm certainly not going to put much stock in uh, what people are doing to prevent the thing from spreading because they're not doing anything to prevent it from spreading now. They're all too busy being afraid of foreigners to think that it's uh, being spread locally. Well, here's something interesting. When uh, I left and we got locked down, this place was nothing but a mud pit. It was literally a hole in the ground with a bunch of mud and water. And now, well now it looks like this. Simply amazing how quickly they can make a park. It's really amazing. I'm getting off the busy road, going down into the alleyways of some old neighborhoods. I've always enjoyed walking through these places. Certainly glad it's not so busy right now. This is sort of a mix of old and a little bit newer. Chinese neighborhoods like it used to be that was always full of this sort of thing in the cities. Neighborhoods like this, but uh, they're becoming fewer and fewer. They tear them down to make way for places like where I'm living. Large apartment blocks, giant towers, and little parks down beneath. Kind of sad in a way, because they all look so generic. This is so much more interesting to walk around in. It's amazing. Still see so many people without masks. I know I've already mentioned it, but it just amazes me. And people keeping their distance from me, because I'm a foreigner, which please keep your distance. <laughs> That's perfectly fine by me. I don't need to be uh, put in danger because some people think that uh, the virus has been eradicated from China when uh, I'm pretty sure that that's, well, that's just complete fantasy. We'll put it that way. I'm passing a lot of schools along here that are eerily quiet. Nothing has opened back up yet. Um, in fact, there are a lot of foreigners here that have been working as uh, teachers in universities, public schools, kindergartens, that sort of thing. And because so many of them are not opening back up, they're, uh, <laughs> well, they're leaving their careers and they're uh, looking for other employment. Unfortunately, that's also difficult these days. There's not a lot of anything going on. There's a lot of factories. They've opened back up, but the demand for uh, exports is so low, they've gotten rid of at least, you know, like half of their work. Well, I don't know how many, what percentage, but a lot of their workers have been let go and the rest have been told to take a pay cut. I've seen in the comments people talking about uh, the factories that they work with saying that the workers didn't come back. That's not true. The workers probably would have come back if they could, but they were told not to come back by the factory. It's just a real mess out here. I figure I'll walk through this new park on my way back. I've got to get a package for my wife, so I'm on my way back, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I thought I might uh, walk through. Well, they've got a little brick path, flower beds, trees, full-grown trees. This is really something. All in such a short time, they built all this grass. I mean, obviously, they, uh, they brought it in and Oh, but boy, it looks nice. Got a little footpath here. Oh, that's not very... I'll hold it. I don't know. Maybe I'm not supposed to be... Nah, I'm walking on it. It's too late. Taking the shortcut across the park. Yeah, it's a nice little park. Too bad... Uh, too bad I can't enjoy it under better circumstances. By the way, motorcycles are illegal in a lot of the cities in China. If... Uh, for example, in Shanghai, if you have one of those uh, motorcycles, ooh, that thing needs new brakes. If you have a, uh, a motorcycle or one of those carts and the police find it, they'll basically take it and smash it apart and haul it away on a truck. They don't like motorcycles there for whatever reason. Oh, man. Not bad. Now I won't be in last place on the app that tracks how many steps you take each day. But I do think I've probably got enough for this video. I don't want it to be too long or too big of a file, otherwise I'll never get it uploaded. So, I guess with that, I will see you guys in the next one.